Hello everybody. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Time to take that walk and go see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews. Today, today's beer is Mendocino's Imperial IPA. Uh, this beer is a 8 percenter. And according to what it says here, this is a year-round edition from then. And guys, I'll be just straight up honest with you. I have done some Mendocino beers uh, earlier in the beer review uh, evolution that I've started here. And I... To be frankly honest, I have never been blown away by Mendocino beers. And Jared brought a couple of them down, and the last one wasn't too bad. But uh, to me, that they're just lacking something. And I don't know if it's the freshness of the beer or what it is, because uh, I do not think they date their stuff. Now, this bottle's got a lot of condensation on it, and I don't see anything on the label here about a date and let me do a quick look with the specs on but I don't see any kind of dating and I have a big beef with that when these guys try to make IPAs and and double IPAs and don't put dates on their bottles so uh, like I said it's got a lot of condensation on it and uh, it maybe have something written on it so we'll take a second glance when I come back and uh, and do the final chug on this and once the condensation has evaporated but uh, it is what it is uh, to me it's it and this is just my opinion it's a lot like the Sarnak and the Harpoons and some of the other ones that are just kind of average to me I've not had one maybe this will be the one that will convince me or change my mind I hope so Jared thanks for bringing them down I appreciate it uh, like I said this is a year round at eight percent Commercial description on this one, and according to what they've written here, it ought to be an awesome beer. This full-bodied Imperial IPA is brewed with massive amounts of premium variety varieties of hops such as Amarillo, Cascade, Simcoe, and Crystal. I mean, all excellent hops. And paired with a rich blend of luscious Munich caramel and two-row pale malts, the result is a perfect balance of luxuriant malt and heady, exhilarating hot flavor. I, sir, I certainly hope so. After primary fermentation is finished, we dry hop our Imperial IPA with copious quantities of the above mentioned hops. It is in cold condition for a few weeks. The result is an outstanding, unforgettable hop aroma, starting with an original gravity of 20 Plato and finishing at 8% alcohol by volume. This Imperial IPA is a hop toward your force. Or they're off their tooting that horn really big, so I'm hoping they're correct on this one. Without having a date on it, how in the hell are we going to know? That's what I'm talking about. Alright guys, enough about the dating on it. I'm pretty sure it doesn't, but we'll double check it here later. Food pairing cuisine is barbecue, cheeses are peppery, Monterey, pepper jack, sharp blue cheddar. Your more pungent cheeses, gorgonzola, Limburger, your typical IPA pairings, meats, game, grilled meat, and salmon, and glassware, a snifter, tulip, oversized wine glass. I got the double glass so we can enhance these aromas. Hopefully it works. And the beer, it says, can be sellable for long periods under proper conditions. I disagree with that 100 freaking percent, guys. I don't sell them my double IPAs unless they're boozy. Hopefully this will not be an 8 percent, but I have had boozy 8 percenters before. Nice hit, nice carbonation on the bottle, a little bit of smoke, into the glass we go. Aggressive pour down the center, gives us about a finger of head, over into the light. A rich, copper tone, caramelly color, 
I can see the bulb right through it, so I would say this is a filtered beer, not bottle conditioned. Looks pretty good in the glass. It looks like a very nice beer in the glass. Let's get a nose on it. Right off the bat, it's more caramely, more malty than it is hoppy. If they're using all these hops, all I can say is either the beer is old or they don't know what the hell they're doing. My beers are more hoppier than this, and they're not even double IPA. So usually double means double malt, double hops. And that was a kind of I was kind of a scared of this, uh, especially when Jared brought them down and he brought me down to Mendocino, uh, Mendocino beers. I'm going, man, I've had a couple of them, and they have just not been impressive. A lot like the Sardak beers. I've not had a Sardak beer that's been impressive to me. They're just kind of transitional beers. If, you've, uh, if you're drinking Bud Miller or Coors and you want to taste something that's got a little, just a little bit more of, of malt and hops, that would be one that I would recommend if you could get that in your area. But if we're a seasoned hop head or an imperial IPA drinker such as myself, it's got to have that presence. If you're, if you're brewing an English style IPA, you might get away with a little less or more subdued hop profile. But if you're brewing an American IPA, double IPA, it better have some hot profile and not just a big malty profile. Because when I smell all that malt and not the hops, it either tells me the beer is old or it's at its end of its shelf life or they, they don't know what the hell they're doing because it's not got that profile. Just my opinion now. I'm getting caramel roasted malt Hoppy, a nice sweet sensation, and no hops. It is, I'm going to call it like I said, brothers. Let's give it a taste. Cheers, everybody. Thanks, Jared. There is some bitterness in there, but this is a malt bomb. And I, and I hate to be that critical, because like I said, if it doesn't have a date on it, who the hell knows how old the beer is. And I know this is not Jared's fault, because he, he's just trying to bring me something that I haven't reviewed before. And Jared, don't take it personal, but when the beers do not have dates on them, how are we to know? I mean, you're spending your hard-earned money to buy beers. It's supposed to be an American double IPA. And you get it, and it's a malt bomb. Well, that's either because of old beer, or non-dated beer, or the brewer's got his head up his butt. And I hate to be that way, I hate to be that critical, but my God, I brew better beer than this. So, I'm going to be that critical. Uh, after 1,340 some beer reviews, I think I know what a double IPA should taste like. And in Mendocino, if you ain't got enough balls to put a date on your beer, you get what you deserve. It's not a bad beer, trust me. I'm not getting a big uh, alcohol presence, so. They definitely know how to brew beer, but I don't know if they know how to hop beer. Or they definitely don't know how to date beer. And I, and I, I don't want to go into a rant over this, but the, uh, the conversation has left, and I'm going to check it right now. And there is no dating that I can see anywhere on this bottle. And according to the price tag on that, it looks like Jared paid about three bucks for this. And as long as they keep continuing to undate their beers, you will never see this fat old boy buy one of these beers for the bridge. The only way you'll see is somebody like Jared will bring me one of these uh, for me to review, but... Homie ain't going to buy a beer that's an IPA, especially a double IPA, that don't have a damn date on the bottle. And Mendocino has been doing this long enough that they can afford to put a dating machine at the end of their bottling line, but they choose not to. Or that they are dating, and they're dating the six-pack or the cases, which is horse hockey as far as I'm concerned. So, 
Jared, brother, please don't take it personal, but I think this is a malt bomb. It is not a good representation of a double IPA. But we're going to let it warm up like I always do. Like I said, it's not a bad beer. I'm not getting a lot of alcohol yet uh, now that it's uh, 40 degrees out of the fridge, but it may change once it warms up. So let's let it warm up and let me cool down and quit ranting about this beer and uh, see where it ends up, guys. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Got just a little left. It has left a little bit of lacing on the glass, but I'm going to continue my rant. Uh, the biggest problem I have with these guys, they're a big enough brewery to date their stuff, especially the bottles, and they choose not to. Well, maybe it flies off the shelf around where they're brewing it, and maybe it's an awesome beer at the pub or brewery, wherever they serve their draft versions of this, but I am not impressed. I am definitely not impressed. I have reviewed three or four of their beers now. I have not been impressed. Their oatmeal, their oatmeal stout was probably the best one. I think I gave it a B plus, but it still was undated. But with that big of an ABV, which I think it was an eight percent or two, it was decent. Uh, that beer is not going to deteriorate as much as an IPA or a double IPA sitting on the shelf or being undated. You don't know how old it is, but. I did uh, Eye of the Hawk and, uh, and something else, and then he, he brought me, I think he brought me two of, two of their beers. And the last one wasn't that bad, but it was undated also. And this one is undated, and it's a double. To me, it's a malt bomb, and I think more of that is attributed to not being dated and being an older beer. And a $3 sticker, which is on the bottom, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure that's what he paid for it. He may not have, but Jared, you may put some comments in there what this beer costs. If $3 sticker is what you paid for it, I think that's a little pricey, even for a double IPA. I would much rather pay $7.99 or $8.99 for a Stone Enjoyed by 420 and really get that malt, I mean that hop experience, <clears throat> rather than pay $3 for a 12-ounce bottle and have a malt bomb when it's when they got double IPA written all over it. To me it's more of like an English style which is a more subdued hop presence with the European style hops rather than the American hops. And them using Cascade and Centennial and Simcoe. I mean like I said earlier guys, I brew better beer than this. And it's not impressing me whatsoever. Uh, Jared, like I said, don't take a personal guy but I am not impressed with this beer. And basically, the reason for that is, I don't know how old it is, and, and I think the hops have subsided. Uh, and it's not as hoppy as it probably was when it was put in the bottle. And these guys choose not to date their bottles, and I have a big problem with that. This is 2014, and I don't know how long they've been in business, but I've been reviewing their beers for a couple years now, and like I said earlier, you won't see this guy spend my money for an undated double IPA or an IPA. These guys can afford to do that and they choose not to. So, let's do the final chug. It's not a bad beer, but it is a malt bomb. The hops have definitely subsided, or they weren't there to begin with if it's a fresh bottle. It does have a nice bitterness on it. The alcohol, now that it's warmed up, is slightly present, but it's not overwhelming. It's not boozy. But it is a malt bomb. Uh, it, it does not have the, the American hop presence that they're saying all of these hops that they put in this beer. And dry hop, too, on top of that. Like I said, I don't have that prime brewing beers. Uh, but my beers are kegged, and they're fairly fresh, and, uh, and, and the hops don't or fade or subside by the time the keg is emptied. So these guys could do better too. And I hate to flog a dead horse, but I will not purchase a, Men a Mendocino beer without a date on it. And Jared, thanks again, brother, for bringing it down. This is confirm reaffirms my commitment that I will not buy one of their beers until they start dating their stuff. So I know how old that beer is. Uh, if you're buying a beer that's six months old or a year old, this is what you're going to get. Uh, and if, if you see that, if you see 
a date on the bottle and you open it and you drink it and it is a malt bomb when they say it's an IPA or a double IPA. Somebody don't know what the hell they're doing. I mean if you're drinking a fresh bottle of this and it's still got that same problem, they got a problem. That's, that's what I'm saying. So this is not a good representation of the style as far as I'm concerned. Uh, none of their beers have gotten better than a B plus. That was the oatmeal salad. Everything else has been a B or a B minus. I am so unimpressed with this version of it. I'm going to give it to C. Uh, there, are, there are beers that are much, my beers are better than this. I hate to keep saying that because I don't review my beers and you can't buy my beers. But there are better double IPAs out than this. So, Jared, if you like this beer, brother, more power to you. Uh, I do, I, I'm not impressed. I am not impressed. So I will not recommend anybody to buy this beer. I'm glad I got to try this version of it, but without a date on it, I got a feeling this is an old bottle. Uh, until they step up to the plate and start dating their bottles, not their cartons, not their cases, but the bottles, so you know how old the beer is and how fresh it is, they're going to get that kind of grade from me. Especially when I drink a double IPA and it basically has a more floral, herbal, like a European hop rather than the Cascade Centennial Simcoe hops that they say they're using on this and dry hopping in it on top of that. So, thumbs down on the Mendocino Brewing as far as I'm concerned. I will not purchase their beers until they step up to the plate and start dating their beers so I know how fresh they are when I buy them. The only way you'll ever see me review another one of these is if somebody like Jared or somebody else sends me one that says, oh this is fresh, I just bought it at the brewery or, or this, that and the other. I will review it if I haven't reviewed it already, but they need to date their beers, especially this style. The Imperial Stouts and the Oatmeal Stouts that are big beers, it's not quite as critical, but the IPAs and the low ABV beers, it is. So with that being said, I'm sticking with the guns. Uh, it gets the four for me, which is the C. Uh, this is fairly average. It's well made because it's not boozy, but it's not hopped according to what the style says it is. So I'm sticking to my guns on this one. Uh, Mendocino, step up to the freaking plate and date your damn stuff. Uh, you're going to lose customers. You've already lost this one as far as I'm concerned because I won't buy one until I see a date on your bottle. So, With that being said, let's go over and see what everybody else thinks. Alright, we'll go over to Beer Advocate first. Beer Advocate says good and I think that's very generous. If I was rating this bottle uh, numerically, I would give it a 75. Alright, over to Rate Beer. Rate Beer says 84, so evidently somebody got a fresh bottle there, but 36 in the style. I agree with that. 84, it's a decent beer. It's a well-made beer because it's not boozy. But as far as a Imperial IPA, if I was grading it on an Imperial IPA numerically, I would agree with the 36. This is a malt bomb. It's not a hop bomb. It's not, it's not hoppy whatsoever. So, with that being said, guys, if you've had the Imperial IPA from Mendocino, let me know what you think of it. Not impressed on this end of the table. Jared, thanks again, brother. Don't take it personal. Glad I got to try it, but this just reaffirms my thoughts about their beers. So, that being said, guys, give me some comments back on this one. Hit the like button, rate, comment, subscribe, and I know we're going to get a better one than this tomorrow. See you then.